हेलो फ्रेंड्स हेलो माय यंग लर्नर्स माय यंग व्यूअर्स आई होप यू आर एन्जॉइंग योर डेज सेफ एट होम विद योर पेरेंट्स एंड एन्जॉइंग द लेसन्स ऑल्सो टुडे आई राखी मिश्रा वेलकम यू टू दिस सेशन वेयर विल बी एन्जॉइंग ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अ ब्यूटिफुल पोएम from your text that is the lake isle of enus free by w b yeats we are going to discuss a very beautiful poem title the lake isle of enus free by william butler yeats now before we go to the understanding the appreciation part of the poem we also must know about the poet this great poet who is one of the greatest romantic poets and the best part is that he had contributed in the last part of the 19th, uh, uh, 19th century as well as in the beginning of the 20th century so he is known both as a modern poet a romantic poet he was born in dublin on june 13 in 1865 his father john butler yeats was an irish painter and barrister mother susan mary pollexwin from sligo this place from where his mother belonged to has got a lot of significance and influence in his life we'll see how he was educated in metropolitan school of art in dublin this great poet is also a nobel laureate he go he received his nobel prize in 1923 he was not only a poet but also a dramatist and there are a lot of publications in his name i have listed some of them his first one the first book of poems was published in 1889 the wanderings of oisin and other poems then the collection of irish folklore he was very much influenced by and attracted you can say by the irish folk tales and the stories fairy and folk tales in 1888 He also has written a drama The Countless Kathleen in 1892 and there are 12 volumes of poems which he had written over a period of say from 1889 to 1935 and the last volume was published posthumously that is the last poems this was published after his death and he died on 28 January 1939 Now about the poem the poem that we are going to read today the lake isle of enus free was first this poem had first appeared in a magazine the national observer in 1890 and later was included in a volume of poems the rose in 1893 when he was in london it's a lyrical poem it is a musical poem and this poem has been sung by various singers in various choir so it is best enjoyed if this poem is sung it's written in london where where is the setting the poet is in london and he feels isolated he feels like escaping from that city life and he wanted he, you can say that he felt as if he was exiled by the rural beauty he wants to escape this city life of london and he wants to go and enjoy the rural beauty and that is why he expresses his desire strong desire to go and enjoy the rural beauty in these lines of the poem now this poem is a nature poem 
how we can say that it is a nature poem there are a lot of elements in this poem which tells us that poet wants to enjoy every bit of nature he observes nature and he enjoys writing this poem imagining himself to be amit's nature then it is not only a nature poem if you read the poem analyze it you'll find he goes on a spiritual journey also because this poem is mentioning his strong desire his longing to search for peace and tranquility and my dear children those who are looking for peace and tranquility some what we can say that they are looking for spirituality they get peace and peace of mind when they search for something spiritual there is a sense of escape as i said he never liked the city life of london he wanted to escape from this city life this mad city life fast city life and he wants to go and enjoy his longing for peace and tranquility of innes free this innes free place which is which has lot of importance in his life the time spent there he remembers again and again in his life he recollects all those moments which he had spent there wants to go back to that place be alone there and enjoy his time looking for various things various beautiful things of the nature and write this poem now what is this what is this place where is it in his free in his free is not an imaginary place no it is a small island on the lake low gill in the county sligo as i said his maternal side was from this place and he had spent good time there good time of his childhood days there in sligo which means abounding in shells it's a coastal seaport in the county town of county sligo ireland within the western province of connaught now as i said this is a lyrical poem so my dear children i would love to sing it for you enjoy this poem and note one thing while i recite is recite this poem sing this poem for you you'll feel as if i am trying to take you to that journey through which the poet has gone i want that you should also derive some pleasure derive some peace while i am reciting it singing it for you because the ultimate aim of this poem is that poet poet is looking for peace and tranquility and he looks for all the beautiful things which he would wish to do he would wish to find out peace out of those things here i start the lake isle of innisfree i'll rise and go now and go to innisfree on a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made nine bean rows will i have there a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud glad and shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the wells of the morning to where the cricket sings there midnight all the glimmer and noon a purple glow and evenings full of the linnet sings 
children i think you all got the essence of this poem that yes this is a peaceful poem this is the poem which takes you which drives you out of the mad race the mad fast city life and it takes you to the place which is peaceful which is completely silent and this plenty of natural beauty all around you my dear friends if we take this poem right from the first stanza i will arise and go now and go to inis free he wants to go there i will arise i will go from here i will go out from here and where would i go i is the poet here yes he would love to go to inis free he longs to go to inis free where what will he do he would build a small cabin you can see in the picture built there of clay and wattles made wattle is the twisted sticks which are made to make the fences he would use these twisted sticks to make the boundary nine bean rows he would grow something for him to eat nine bean rows will i have there see his planning what all things he dreams of a hive for the honey bee he would have the place for the bees to make their honeycomb there and he would be making he would be enjoying the bees buzzing and live alone in the bee loud glade glade means an open space he doesn't want it to be a very crowded place rather he wants it to be a silent quiet lonely open place he wants that he would be listening to the bees buzzing and i shall have some peace there yes he feels he would be driving peace he would be getting ultimate peace tranquility there when he goes near that for peace comes dropping slow now he is uh, he is imagining certain things that what what kind of peace he would look he would look for the peace comes dropping slow which just like the way the veil drops from the bright space for peace comes dropping slow dropping from veils and this way the way we see the morning how from the d- night then we have this morning time early morning time when you can see the how bright sun comes out it is not if you see the early morning part when it is about just before the sunrise you will see that as if the morning is removing dropping its veil from the clouds there midnight's old glimmer he finds that even during the midnight there is a glimmer the shine of the moon and the noon he is mentioning about all parts of the day it's not only the morning he has observed the noon he has observed the midnight sky and the evening during the evening the evening full of linnet's wings linnet is a small bird right 
you can see in the picture a small bird and he, he finds as if he would be amidst all these things the morning time would be so beautiful the midnight would be so shiny so glimmering the noon would be just like the purple glow and there would be complete beauty the ultimate beauty can be enjoyed during this time during all the parts of the day at Innisfree. I will arise and go for always night and day. Again, he says, I will, he's insisting, there is a repetition here. I will arise and go for always night and day. I hear, what does he hear? He hears the lake water. You can see the lake here, how it comes and he, as if it is hitting his, it's touching the shore and making some sound, continuous sound. I hear the lake water lapping with low sound by the shore. It's making some kind of contact with the shore and that produces a very pleasant sound. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep hard score. Now he takes it, takes us to that place where he is while writing this poem. He says, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, while he is in the streets of London, he would be, he would be watching, he would be watching, he would be seriously thinking about his time spent during this. He doesn't want, he, while writing this poem, he thinks that being in London does not give him that kind of pleasure the way it gives to him when he is amidst the nature in Ennisfri. So this, these, these are the streets of London and you can see that he assumes he does not enjoy the life that he's spending in London and he desires to be in Ennisfri where he would be enjoying nature at its best, nature to the fullest. I hear it in the deep heart score. What does he hear? He hear, he hears the, he hears the, these roads, these pavements, which are gray, which are dull. And he doesn't want, he doesn't like this kind of noise. Rather, he would be thinking about, he would like to go back to Innisfree, enjoying the lake. He would be enjoying the beauty of the night, the midnight, the moonlight, he would be enjoying the sky which is so, uh, which looks to be so pleasant, so beautiful during the early morning. And he would be enjoying the birds. He would be enjoying the bee buzzing. The, he would be enjoying planting something for himself and enjoying every bit of his stay at Innisfree. It's a very simple poem, but it has something related to our life also we we people who are spending our time in cities sometimes we also get fed up of this pollution even this uh, this traffic this noise noise pollution air pollution whatever we we see we don't really appreciate and we would all love to shift to the villages to the rural areas to this rural uh, set up where we would be with the nature enjoying every bit of the nature now we'll see what this poem is this was the line by line explanation but now we will analyze the poem as i said this is a nature poem in the beginning i introduced you that it is a nature poem now what is a nature poem here well, how can we say that this is a nature poem he uh, this poem is spoken by the poet standing on the roadway or on the grave pavements and he wishes to go back to the lake of innisfree in the rural irish west and he was he uh, uh, was influenced by one of the american poets author says thoreau and he also wanted to have something, some feel of going close to nature, observing nature so closely and 
get some pleasure out of it. There is also a mention of certain na elements of nature like he talks about a small cabin that he would make. He would also make some bean rows. He would be listening to the bees in the open space. Then it is not only a nature poem. Of course, it has got elements of nature. But it is also a spiritual journey. How we can say it is a spiritual journey? You see, in stanza 2 and 3, we have read that he wants to get peace. He mentions certain things which would ultimately give him peace. What are the things that he mentions? He says that I would get peace, the peace which comes from the dropping of the dropping from the whales of the morning to where the cricket sings. Cricket is nothing but a small kind of insect. You must have seen it also makes some kind of sound. And it says, shall have some peace in search of wisdom. He is looking for peace. That's why we say it is a spiritual journey. He looks for peace. He is into a journey which is meant, which is meant for peace and tranquility. And this is to look for wisdom, to search in search of wisdom. He talks about his midnight's glimmer, shine, beauty, right? Then he even talks about the dropping of veils of the morning, how the morning sun, it's not uh, bright at once, right? We see that how at the time of daybreak, how it looks, it looks so bright as if morning is removing dropping its veil gradually and we get the, get to look at the bright sun not at once but there is a gradual shift from darkness to bright day even in the noon time we have seen sky looks purple and it's glowing even he hears it deep in his heart's core he wants to go back to that place. He wants to look for that place. It is at that time when the poet had written this, there was a lot of disturbance in Ireland. So it, we can say that there is some kind of political journey also. Here he is looking for something that is different from what he is experiencing. He is experiencing the kind of you can say some kind of bondages. He is not free. He, is, he does not enjoy the city life. He is not enjoying the congested lanes, the city, congested city. He is not appreciating the noise in the city. And he wants that he should be away from this, uh, uh, from this uh, chaotic life which he finds in the city. And where does he find it? He finds a lot of uh, during the time when he was in Ireland, that was uh, Ireland was a part of British Empire, the Irish West, and this part was badly affected because there was a lot of poverty, there was a lot of backwardness, the, even th this was ravished by famine. And the Irish people had immigrated to places like London, Boston, and New York, and they were all missing their homeland. This is one poem where we find an, uh, a touch of it that even the poet had to leave that place. He had to leave for London and he's again missing his native place, Ireland. And he expresses his desire, strong longing for going there and enjoying something which gives, his, gives him pleasant uh, feeling, which gives him peace and tranquility. Politics is involved here because uh, it is also associating to the beauty, truth, peace with Ireland. He is searching for how he can uh, look for peace in Ireland. Now, my dear children, other things that we can notice here in the poem. This poem is lyrical in nature. We have seen that. This is not in free verse as we have seen in other poems but this follows a rhyming pattern. If you see the first line, what is the last word? Last word is in is free. So last sound is, the final sound is free. If you see the second line, second line, last word is made. So what is the last sound? 
it is aid so how to find the rhyming pair we have to see line wise line by line right so first line we have to name it as a and we have to see what sound it is if it is if it rhymes with the second line again it will be a but here we say free that is re does not go with aid so we won't name it as a we will say b but if you see the third line it says honey b honey b means the last sound is e so free e honey b e so again it will be a this is how you have to find out the rhyming pattern so if you see the first stanza we have the rhyming pair in this free and honey b made glade so we will name it as a b a b similarly we have the second stanza with the same rhyming pattern c d c d then e f e f sometimes we just say the rhyming pattern is a b a b that is also correct now we will will notice one more thing about the poem that this poem is just of 12 lines and there are three stanzas and having four quatrains that means each stanza is of four lines right it's the nature of uh, the theme of the poem is nature and it looks for peace and harmony then what is the tone here while i was singing the song for you reciting the song for you i said you must have noticed that this gives the tone itself the way it is sung um, it is meant to be sung it is it is to give peace it's to give complete peaceful experience it is even thoughtful because it is not just an escape but also the reason why you want to escape because you don't like this this rush of the city life you want to get peace and harmony in your life you are searching for some kind of spiritual uh, spiritual uh, you are longing for spirituality so it is also a thoughtful thing and thoughtful tone and you are expecting something you are expecting something harmonious you want to have a harmony with the nature you want to derive some kind of pleasure by setting up a harmony with the nature so this poem is a very simple poem but this tells us that how we can get peace even out of these uh, out of the situation that we are experiencing now even the time that we are going through this is also a very tough time for all of us and we always have to look for peace and tranquility even out of these difficult times now let us discuss the poetic devices first we will see imagery you can very well uh, uh, find out that this poem has got lots of imagery visual imagery right we can say that small cabin of clay wattles then a hive of honey bee this gives you some kind of images the moment this you read the poem or you enjoy the poem a kind of image forms in front of you right you you get traveled you get yourself uh, transported to that uh, that setting where you have a small cabin you have honey bees you have the dawning sky you have the cricket singing you have the honey bee bees humming buzzing right and you have the gl glimmering midnight you have the purple sky in the noon you have these linnet birds wings so all these things they give you a kind of visual imagery now you also have a repetition as i said in stanza 1 and stanza 3 this is again for emphasizing that yes he doesn't want to wait here anymore in london he just wants to get up and go and get what he wants there is personification in the, the line wails of the morning here morning has been personified he feels as if morning gradually is removing its veil and we see the morning sky the bright sky gradually from the daybreak to the dark morning time to the bright day then we have alliteration alliteration again here we have in stanza 3 line 2 which says stanza 3 line 2 we have lake water lapping with low sound so the sound l l l is repeated right so alliteration 
then we have a metaphor again we have a comparison here so what is compared whales of the, in the morning we have also seen it is personification it is also a comparison so it refers to the clouds how the finally the clouds get cleared uh, or the dew gets cleared and we get to see a very clear morning sky then we have inversion inversion stands are one line three what is inversion it is writing a sentence which which could be otherwise written in a better in a correct grammatical way right here it is nine bean rows will i have there instead of writing a poet has purposefully used it because it is it gives a poetic touch to it and writes that i have there instead of i have there nine bean rows i will have there writes nine bean rows will i have there so this is another technique which the poets use avoiding all the grammatical rules because they have a poetic license and they can deviate from that right so now we will be looking into the message part what is the what is the message that we get from this poem the poet wants to tell us that we should remain close to nature and we if we want to search for peace and tranquility we'll get it in the nature we should try to derive pleasure we should look for peace we should look for a uh, extreme the ultimate peace through nature nature is something that gives you peace if you remain close to nature it will always help you in making you close to god close to your spiritual world and you will be getting a different kind of mental peace a harmony with the nature now let us discuss some of the questions from the poem as we have already seen what kind of a place is in his free in his free is a small island right where is it you can refer to the notes that we had discussed then name the three things that the poet wants to do when he goes back there he would like to build a small cabin he would have some bees he would plant the beans there and he would love to be amidst nature what does he hear and what is its impact on him he hears the bees buzzing he hears the uh, the uh, water of the uh, the lake uh, having a contact with the shore and giving a very pleasant sound and what is its impact on him he finds peace he finds uh, tranquility he he finds he gets pleasure out of it what does he hear in his heart core even when he is far away from he can hear he can hear the beautiful sound he can hear those uh, the things that would give him which he misses when he is not in in his free he will he is able to hear his heart uh, looking for crying for wanting for that peaceful place those peaceful uh, that peaceful nature now we have how does the poet contrast in his free with the place where he is now he is in london and what kind of play, uh, place he uh, wants to look for or he is longing for he is longing for in his free which is very close to him so what is the difference in these two this is completely an isolated place a very quiet lonely place and having uh, the ultimate beauty of nature here right whereas london is a busy place with streets busy with all the weak vehicles people it's congested place and there is lot of rush and he doesn't find nature there the beauty of nature there so he is this this is how he is differentiating the place in his free with the place where he is now why does the poet miss in his free because he had spent his childhood days there and he always longed for peace and tranquility that's why he missing he is missing this place in his free now pick out the words from the poem which shows that he was a nature lover there are several places several lines several things that he has he has talked about bees he has talked about the uh, shore he has talked about the beauty of the morning sky he has talked about the beauty of the uh, the moonlight right so there are several places where he has mentioned about the beauty of nature and he is a nature lover peace comes dropping slow dropping from the whales in the morning to where the cricket sings 
now early in the morning you find that it appears as if morning cloud the sky is filled with cloud and sometimes even dew and how this morning sky gradually it uh, removes its veil or you can say a cover a cover kind of thing and it removes and gradually we'll see that we can see the clear sky so how you can explain here it is again uh, you can say it is a personification and poet is comparing the morning uh, sky uh, which is filled with clouds which is covered with clouds or sometimes even dew and gradually with the passage with the morning uh, uh, advancing you can say that it is clearing and it appears as if the way the veil uh, drops from the uh, woman's face or you can say it's similarly here morning is compared with the with that bride so here we have seen so many things that uh, wb eats the greatest uh, nature poet romantic poet has mentioned about and we uh, get to know that even we can derive pleasure from nature and we should go close to nature if we want to enjoy nature right so with this we come to the end of our session thank you so much